Have you ever wondered how much power knob and tube wiring can handle? Well, today we're going to test some 100 year old wiring. This is typical knob and tube. These are the knobs that hold the wire, and these are the tubes that go through 2x4s and other parts of the wall. And this is called loom, and it's used to go around things like pieces of wall. I extracted all of these parts, the wiring, the insulators, the loom, from an old house that was being renovated in the little picturesque town of Pakenham, Ontario, just outside of Ottawa. And I'm not 100% sure how old this is, but my guess is it's perhaps 80 or 90 or 100 years old. Now the wire itself, well, I measured it and it appears to be about the diameter of number 14 wire, which for modern wire would be rated at 15 amps. The insulation is soft rubber covered with cloth. And well, if we examine this wire, that's what it appears to be. Now, when I did strip the insulation off, there was certainly some tarnishing or oxidization on the outer part of the copper, but it also looked a little bit silvery. And I'm wondering if there was a thin tin or lead coating on top. And that might have been the case because the connections, like this connection that I extracted, were made by twisting the wire, well, twisting one wire around the other and then soldering it together. So if the wire indeed had a slight tin or lead coating, it would have made that soldering process much easier. Well, what we're going to do is test this today by passing ever increasing currents through the wire and basically see how much current it can handle before the insulation starts to melt or boil or burn or perhaps the insulators get so hot that they actually crack. I really have no idea what will happen. Now, because this is 100-year-old wire, we really don't know how the insulation has survived the time. It may have gotten worse, or maybe it dried out and got better than it originally was. And on top of that, were there any standards at the time? Was the wire always number 14? Was the insulation always the same? It's really hard to know, and there was certainly a lot less standardization back then. So different knob and tube installations may in fact use different wire and behave differently. So you have to take these tests with a grain of salt. That having been said, let's try that. 15 minutes later, at 15 amps, what do we have? Well. I think I can just barely detect a little bit of warmth. Obviously no devastating effects to the wire, as you'd hope. Let's look at it with the IR camera. So we've maybe got a couple of degrees Celsius temperature rise. That's maybe four degrees Fahrenheit. You can see the effect of the wire going through the 2x4. Obviously, no visible temperature there. Is there much of a lowering of temperature where it goes through the sleeve, or as it's called, the loom? Doesn't appear to be very much, if at all. But if we look closer to the knobs, we can certainly see the knobs are relatively cold, as is the tube. Now it's not surprising that the temperatures are so low because after all the wire is essentially air cooled. So I think what we're going to do is raise the current to 20 amps and wait another 15 minutes and then take a look at the temperatures again. Oh, I can certainly feel some warmth on the wire. The ceramic tube feels completely cold as do the knobs. Certainly no noticeable temperature rise on the loom. It might be partly due to its insulating effect, it may also just be because it's effectively increasing the surface area that the heat is coming through. And well, let's see what it looks like with the IR camera. We can very noticeably see the temperature rise. The loom certainly has had a cooling effect. The maximum temperature is 
somewhere around 32 Celsius. So that's a 7 degree rise or maybe 14 or 15 Fahrenheit. We can certainly see the knobs are remaining quite cool. And there's the loom again, relatively cool. And we can also very nicely see the tube as it goes into the 2x4. And interestingly enough, it is slightly warmer where it exits the wood and slightly cooler where it's sticking out into the air. Not completely surprising, but it's certainly removing a lot of heat or insulating a lot of the heat from getting to the wood itself. The wire is noticeably warmer. Let's look at the other side. That's where the tube is just coming out of the 2x4, doing a very good job at keeping the wood cool. And yes, the wire is noticeably warmer as it comes out. And same sort of thing around the knob. Top of the knob is amazingly cold. What's the other knob like? Pretty much the same. And I think what we'll do now is once again increase the current this time to 30 amps and take a look in a few minutes. What does it feel like? The wire certainly feels warm. The shroud here also just a little warm but not like the wire. What about the insulators? I'm beginning to feel some warmth on them. So let's see what it looks like with the IR camera. So what's the maximum temperature? Maybe 37 degrees. So a temperature rise of 12 Celsius or 24 Fahrenheit. Look at the knobs. They're certainly now warmer than the surroundings but still relatively cool. The wire, of course, is the warmest part. The shroud is relatively cool. And the tube is also relatively cool, but once again, quite a bit warmer where it goes through the wood. Not surprising because the wood is gonna act as an insulator as well. So I think what we're gonna do is up the current by another 10 amps and see what happens in 15 minutes. 15 minutes at 40 amps and things are beginning to happen. The wire is getting quite warm and for the first time I can now sort of slightly bend the rubber or maybe rotate the rubber whereas before it seemed to be quite solidly attached to the copper. The other thing that's quite noticeable is the cloth on the wire seems to be getting blacker. So I'd like to say the rubber is off-gassing, but maybe off-gassing isn't the right term. Probably more something along the lines of diffusing into the rubber. Maybe parts of it or components of it are becoming liquid. In fact, my finger is getting a little bit darker from it. So not surprisingly, the 100-year-old rubber is certainly beginning to show the effects of heat from the current. This is staying nice and cool. The ceramic tube certainly feels warm, but certainly not in any way towards a dangerous level. And I would say the same for the knobs. In fact, the knobs feel cooler. I guess because there really isn't so much wire in them relative to the surface area. So once again, what we should do is look at this with the IR camera. Maximum temperature that I'm seeing seems to be up to about 45. So that's 20 Celsius rise or 40 Fahrenheit. Certainly everything is much warmer now. But once again, the, certainly the knobs are keeping cool, or relatively cool, and the tube isn't doing a bad job either. And the loom is also keeping things cool. In fact, it looks like it's pretty close to the same temperature as the tube. And once again, if we look at the other side, we can very nicely see 
the knobs keeping the wood relatively cool, as is the tube. So even though the rubber appears to be at the verge of disintegrating, the ceramic insulators are doing a very good job at protecting the wood. At the same time, you can sort of imagine that if the wire weren't in the open air, its temperature would be a lot hotter and bad things would probably happen. And so, once again, what we'll do is up the current by another 10 amps, 15 minutes at 50 amps, and we're getting a rather interesting effect on the wire. Some of the cloth is sort of standing on end, and if you touch it, falls off, and that's certainly new. And I'm guessing it has to do with the rubber now becoming very pliable and not holding it on the way it used to. Um, the wire is almost too hot to touch. In fact, I can't hold on to it very long. Even the tubes are now very warm and certainly the top part of it anyway is uncomfortable to touch for any length of time. What's this like? It's also warm, but not as warm as the tubes. And these insulators, warm but not uncomfortably so. And certainly the rubber on the wire is very soft, probably for the first time in a hundred years. And now at 50 amps, we have about 0.7 of a volt across the length of the wire, the voltage drop. So that means there is 35 watts being dissipated in the wire, or perhaps maybe 17 watts along each side or each leg of the wire. That's actually a lot of heat for a relatively small surface area. I think we're going to see a similar effect as with the modern 14.2, in the sense that we can up the current quite a bit, but perhaps the main difference is because we have ceramic insulators, the wires are not going to have the opportunity to touch the way they did in, well, 14.2. So it probably means we can get these things to relatively high temperatures, and it's going to be interesting to see if the rubber catches fire. The 2x4 certainly sticks out like a sore thumb, being blue and cold. And if we look at the ends, what does it look like? Temperatures seem to be up to about 80 Celsius now, I think. So a 60 Celsius temperature rise, that's 120 Fahrenheit temperature rise. If we look at the tube, you can certainly see the heat spreading out into the wood. But the wood is still relatively cool. What about the knobs? Same sort of thing. They certainly glow quite nicely in the IR camera. But once again, the wood is being kept relatively cool, so they're doing their job. And the loom, well, just compare the loom with the unloomed wire, also keeping things relatively cool. And maybe we should look at the other side. Same sort of image. The knob's doing their job, as is the tube. Oh, and one other thing worth pointing out, I can sure smell that hot or burning rubber smell, you know, much like you get from a tire after it's been spinning or something like that. So the insulation definitely is rubber as per everything I've read and as we suspected. And so we'll up the current by another 10 amps. 15 minutes at 60 amps and the outer cloth on the wire insulation is certainly Delaminating might be the term. I guess over the hundred years, the cloth fabric had got so worn or brittle that the only thing holding it to the wire was the rubber. And now that the rubber is softening, maybe liquefying, it's falling off. What a weird phenomena. I never would have expected that. Um, hot, too hot hot. 
what do we see? Somewhere around 110, 112 is the maximum temperature. 115. So that's above boiling because 100 is boiling for all you Fahrenheit people. And um, what do we see at the tube? Once again, the tube is doing a pretty good job, but it is close to too hot to touch. I can sure smell the burning rubber smell. The knobs are also doing a good job at keeping the wood cool. But you can sure imagine if there was anything touching the wire or worse, covering it, maybe some blown in insulation, it really would not be a good situation. Oh look, we can even see where the loom is close to the 2x4. The 2x4 is beginning to get warm, probably just from the radiant energy that's coming from the loom. And then on the other side, well, pretty much the same scenario. We can sure see where the loom stops just before the closer knob and we can also very nicely see the thick end of the tube protecting the wood. So, once again, a very interesting result. And, well, we are at 60 amps now. I'm going to try for 70. And we'll see if the rubber starts liquefying or dripping or catches fire. At about two minutes at 70 amps we're getting some smoke coming from the rubber here. Hopefully it's visible on the camera. The other thing that's a bit unrealistic doing the test outside is every now and then we get a breeze and that of course helps keep the wire cool, probably cooler than if it was let's say in a wall going through a 2x4. 15 minutes at 70 amps. The main effect is the wire is certainly smoking and getting even more delamination of the cloth fabric around the rubber insulation. Ooh, way too hot. Hot, hot. But yeah, that's too hot to touch. How's this? Ooh, that's also too hot to touch. And let's look at it with the thermal camera. Looks like close to 160 Celsius max. The temperature of the wood, my guess would be somewhere in the 70 or 80 Celsius range. A little bit hard to say. How are our knobs doing? Well, once again, they're doing a good job. I would suggest that the wood is not likely to be close to catching fire. Maybe I'll rephrase that. They're keeping the wood from catching fire, but it's probably too close for comfort, particularly when you think it's probably would be in 100-year-old wood that's really dry. How's the loom? Well, it's certainly getting hot too. And... Um, what else can we see from the back? The loom is looking really quite hot, although you do see that small area just beside the knob where the wire is clearly even hotter where it doesn't have the loom protecting it. And our end of the tube, yeah, getting hot too. So once again, I think what we'll do is try and up at another 10 amps. Only a couple of minutes at 80 amps and the amount of smoke from the rubber insulation has increased dramatically. This is like a barbecue. The smoke always goes in your face. Um, 15 minutes at 80 amps and much more smoke. The loom is clearly bubbling with rubber 
and I'm not sure if the rubber came from the loom itself or the wire inside it. It's too hot to touch and not only is there that rubber smell but also there is occasionally a whiff of what smells like burning wood. So I'm wondering if some of the heat is now enough inside the 2x4 that the wood is charring or maybe down below at the bottom of the knobs. We'll do a quick temperature check and then up the current even more. And I should point out that at this point now we're just upping the current for fun because we've pretty much established that somewhere around 40 amps bad things are starting to happen to the rubber which really means that once again we shouldn't be using this cable for really anything more than perhaps 15 amps. We see temperatures in the 300 Celsius range. So my guess is that the rubber is in fact burning at this point and making some of its own heat. What does the 2x4 look like near the loom? It's certainly getting quite hot. What about where the tube goes in? It's certainly somewhere around the 150 Celsius, so it's getting very hot. And the knobs, they're also pretty hot, maybe in the 200 Celsius range. It's sort of hard to say for sure. But wow, yeah, things are certainly in the temperatures that, well, a fire could be very imminent. Over here is the shorter end of the tube. It's certainly wow, almost as hot as the wire. So it's not surprising that I began to smell what smelled like burning wood or charring wood as opposed to just rubber. So once again, we will try and up the current. 90 amps, we have 2.8 volts of voltage drop. We'll say three. So that would be like 180 watts of power being dissipated in that short length of wire. I'm sure expecting that to burst into flames any instant. So I just saw some rubber dropping out of the tube and onto the 2x4 below it. So the rubber in the tube clearly has liquefied. The voltage is now 3.6 volts. Without a doubt, the heat has caused the resistance of the copper to go up. So we're now probably getting close to 250 watts worth of power. Oh, and then over here, look at what's happening to our wire. It's actually looks like it's glowing red hot at this point. And the cloth is sort of carbonizing and burning off it. Really quite amazing. What does it look like in here? You'd think it was hotter. There you can see some heat. So I think we should look at that with our IR camera. So it's showing 330 Celsius, but that's the maximum temperature that the camera can pick up. What does our tube look like? Look at those temperatures. Yeah, I think they're off the scale for the camera. We have a fire. So things are getting interesting. And in fact, the current just stopped. Hopefully the camera picked it up, but we're getting a certain amount of arcing right in the midst of the loom. Not completely surprising given that that's where the temperature probably would have been hottest that and maybe in the 2x4 near the tube. But I think that's our experiment. And well, look at that. The insulation is really charred. What I did want to do is pull out the knob and just see what the wood looks like. And there seems to be a little bit of charring right at the edges, but the inside is not charred. So there you have it, 100 year old, 
knob and tube wiring tested to the point of destruction. It actually did pretty well. It only showed noticeable signs of problems at 40 amps. And if we assume like modern number 14 wiring, it was rated at 15 amps, that probably is a good margin of safety. So really quite remarkable for 100 year old technology. It goes without saying that if you're in a house or buying a house with old wiring, be it knob and tube or something else, you should definitely have it inspected by a licensed electrician and you should also check with your insurance company to make sure that it is insurable. And even though the wiring itself is pretty good, the big problem with 100 year old wiring is often not the wiring but what's been added to it in the last century. So that brings this video to an end. Thanks for watching. See you next time.